Ladies and gentlemen, I am the CHALL, your Dogs Drovers fan channel, and welcome to this match review, AFC Wimbledon 2, Dogs Drovers 2. So in this video, we're going to be reviewing the game, looking at the stats, giving you my player ratings, and much, much more. So before we get started, make sure you do like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you know my YouTube video, and for now, let's get into this one. So looking then at the first half statistics, we had 64% possession to 36 in favour of Wimbledon. We had two shots, none on target. They had four shots, one on target. We each had a shot off target. They had two block shots, two out of one. Uh, looking at the other ones, they've had one big chance in that half. Three shots inside the box. We had two shots outside the box. And neither goalkeeper had to make a save. It felt very much like Wimbledon were very much in control of that first half. And that's the main thing I got from this first half. It felt very controlled by Wimbledon. It felt like we didn't really go forward a lot. But then the second half was a completely different story. So, of course, they edged the possession 59-41 to 41 in ball possession in the second half. Uh, so, ours was, you know, much, much better. Uh, theirs a little less in the second half. Uh, they had 10 shots, 2 on target. We had 6 shots, 3 on target. They had 4 shots off target to our 2. They had 4 blocked shots to their 1. In terms of goalkeeping saves, we made 1. They made none. Now, of course, overall in the game, if we're talking about overall statistics, uh, they had had 382 passes to our 246, 70% accurate passes to our 52%, 42% uh, long balls to our 26%, crosses 36% to their 33. 50% dribbles uh, each, they had 4 out of 8, uh, we had 3 out of 6. Um, we lost possession 164 compared to their 160. Uh, they won 27 aerial duels. We won 10 less than them. They made 19 tackles, including a very specific one I'm going to go into detail with later. And we made 8 tackles. We made 12 interceptions and 25 clearances. They had 4 interceptions and 18 clearances. So obviously it was a very, very uh, interesting game. Now let's go into key moments and discussing them in a bit more detail. So there was some big chances in that game, which in my opinion, I think in the second half especially, we could have put them away a bit better. Um, one of the big talking points from the first half was the tackle. And you know what I mean. You saw how angry I was in the vlog. The tackle. Now, from my opinion, watching it back, seeing it in the stand there and then, and watching it back afterwards, it was a it was a red card. Don't anybody tell me different. In my opinion, it was a red card through and through. Um, you know, and I think many other Rovers fans have watched it back and think, you know what, yeah, it was a red card. Referee definitely got that wrong. And weirdly enough, the guy who made the tackle actually scored one of Wimbledon's goals. So... It kind of impacts the game here. So, EFL, what's your officiating? Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't think he got any of the ball. He went straight through all the younger. And, yeah, it was just a really bad tackle. We were all so angry in the stands. I was fuming. You could see in my vlog I was fuming. Um, so would anyone else be if you saw that. And I looked, at, I looked at it back again. It was a clear red card. There was no question or doubt about it. It was a clear red card by 100 miles. So... For me, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, the referee could have officiated that a little bit better. The goals we conceded, easy, easy goals to concede. Balls in the box, headers in. Just, just easy, easy goals to concede, man. We just need to be tighter marking on set pieces and crosses in the box. And giving them the, all the space in the world to put the cross in for the second goal was poor. It was poor marking and poor defending. Um, but the two goals that we scored were great goals. You know, second one especially, Cal Noyle's ball into the box was amazing. Um, you know, I rate that really, really highly, that ball in, and then Tommy Rowe just smashed it in. So, for me, I think the goals we, cons we conceded were poor. From the goals we scored, it was great, and both, of course, by, in my opinion, looking back, the man of the match, Tommy Rowe. I said on the supporters coach on the way back, Matt Smith, because of the way, you know, again, 90 minutes, started to tire a little bit towards the end, but 90 minutes, just ran around and gave every single bit of work rate he could, again, Matt Smith. 
But looking back, Tommy Rowe scored the two goals. I don't think there was any other contest, to be honest. I think Tommy Rowe definitely was the man of the match. Um, but let's go into our player ratings from the game. So first of all, you won't be able to see on your screen, but the substitute, I've gone with Clayton 6, Barlow 6, and I've gone with Odebeko 7. Um, you know, I felt like the subs... I think Barlow and Clayton maybe didn't make enough impact. That could have been down to fitness, could have been down to anything. Uh, there was one specific moment towards the end of the second half when I saw Barlow coming down, you know, and he tried to keep the ball and he got tackled and things like that and he got the ball taken off him quite easily uh and it's moments like that where you need your head switching on so uh for me you know i think it's moments like that we have to try and uh, be aware of our surroundings in terms of on the pitch um Odebeko came on made a huge but made a quite a bit of a difference in the second half when he came on and we sort of switched to a four at the back uh when we took williams off at half time so you know for me i feel like Odebeko kind of made a bit of a difference on that four at the back sort of comeback uh, now, on the pitch, Mitchell have gone with a 7. I think he made some good saves. The goals he conceded wasn't his fault. Uh, Younger, Alowu, they get 7s as well. Uh, Williams gets a 6 for his 45 minutes. Um, in the midfield, we've got Gardner, 7. Smith, 8. Uh, Jackson and Noel in the wing-back position, 7. Uh, Tommy Rowe, 8. And I've gone with Martin Griffiths as 7 ratings. So, let's go into what I think we need to be doing against Cheltenham on Saturday. So, Cheltenham, of course, the next game, they lost to Crewe uh, yesterday, uh, which was a bit of a shot result, in my opinion. Uh, but what do we need to do to get, try and get that same result at Cheltenham? Simple, really. Um, would I change formation? Would I stop the three at the back and go with four at the back and bench Williams? It's hard. It's hard. I'm not going to lie. It's hard because, you know, Williams, for me... Um, you know, when he's worked in the three at the back, he's been great. It doesn't, for me, work in a four at the back. So it's, it is hard to bench a player who's been performing the best he's done in a Rovers shirt in that back three. When he changed formation, you drop a good player. But do you add quality up front by bringing in Odebeko? I reckon you do. You know, do we go 4-4-2? Do we go for, like, a 4-5-1 four, four, and sort of the two defensive midfielders, like the, like the double pivot, and then have the the cam and the two left midfielders and right midfielders or wingers, and then the centre forward, or do you go for a 4-4-2 uh, a diamond, and you sort of have the diamond, then you have the two strikers. I don't know. It really is hard. It really is hard. We've played some certain formations. We've played 3-4-2-1, we've played 5-4-1, we've played four at the back. We've done all these different things. So it is very hard to see what the exact formation Gary McSheffrey wants to play. Uh, injuries won't help, but, uh, you know, we'll see with that. Obviously, with Bostock, Anderson and Galbraith, hopefully back in training this week, uh, upcoming. Fingers crossed it will bring a lot of squad depth going into Saturday as well. So uh, we will see what happens. But... There we are, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching this review. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell to see the YouTube video. And for now, I'm the C-H-A-L-L, your dog Stravis fan. If you love the content, thank you very much. If you hate the content, I'm glad you have that opinion. Goodbye. Oh,